We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Today's stop is Columbia, Kentucky, and we get to visit with Phil Kleckler, who is in his second season as the head coach for the Lindsey Wilson Blue Raiders. Coach 10-2 and two last year, opened up with seven consecutive wins, make it to the NAIA quarterfinals. Tell us a little bit about year one. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, Joey. Uh, you know, it's a, a really good year for us. Um, you know, obviously a, a, a challenge for me professionally and personally moving into this role after being here as an assistant uh, the last five years. And it's, um, you know, kind of hard to imagine or, you know, not hard to imagine, but I've, I've been in this role here for, for 18 months. So there's no more uh, first time head coach blunders or anything like that. you got to keep uh, having some success here um, and I'm confident we can do so. Well, Coach, from an outsider's perspective, it didn't look like a whole lot of blunders. I mean, you made it through the season well. The The team had a strong record, made a little run into the postseason as well. Let's talk about 2023 now, and, and uh, you've made it through the spring, heading into the fall. Camp's not here just yet. Will McDonald saw time for you to open the season. Ethan Cash at the quarterback position as well. He closed things out. Uh, talk about uh, the competition that may be there for you in the quarterback position. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we've, uh, have another young man, Reed Bricky, who's been in our program here for uh, a couple years that, um, you know, played in some spots for us throughout the season. Um, and then we've, we've also added a, a transfer in Blaine Espinosa, who was at Thomas Moore, who um, is, they're going Division Two now, but they were in the Mid-South Conference. And, um, you know, I actually uh, was part of recruiting Blaine coming out of high school. Uh, you know, we kind of joke around still about uh, you know, meeting at that IHOP in, in Cookville right before signing day when, you know, uh, broke our heart 24 hours later. But, um, yeah, so we have uh, four guys that we, you know, feel very confident about, and we're going to see how things, you know, shake out here in training camp. And, um, you know, I think we found out a little bit in, in 2022, you know, some of our offensive pains were, you know, from growing pains at the quarterback position, it was hard to, follow Cameron Dukes, who's, you know, playing in the CFL right now. So, um, you know, your offense is going to go based on your quarterback play. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to that competition and, and see how things shake out here in training camp. Those are big shoes to fill. I don't think anyone ever wants to be the guy that follows the guy. Uh, and I think actually uh, you, you sit in that position as well. <laughs> so I, I, I understand there. Yeah, Coach, uh, offensive line, let's talk about that for just a moment. I know there, there are a lot of places and uh, people who are going to be trying to fill skill positions as well, but uh, you have a lot to, of slots to fill on that O-line too. Yeah, we uh, took a big hit there with graduation, and a lot of those, those guys uh, you know, played a ton of snaps for us. And um, – We've had some young guys kind of in the wings and some some guys that have waited their turn. And, um, you know, we, we uh, were very happy with how things kind of progressed from the beginning of the spring uh, to the end of the spring. Um, and, and that offensive line was thrown on the fire pretty quick with, you know, what we do defensively. So going against our defense every day uh, gets that group ready to, to, to go. I mean, you know, there's not a look that they're going to see this season that they probably haven't seen before from our defense, whether it's spring football or training camp. And, um, you know, we got to keep the group moving along fast. And, and I'm confident that we'll have the right guys in place and, and be ready to go. We're speaking now with Coach Phil Kleckler here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here as we are previewing this 23 college football season. We like to talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, Coach, Let's talk about defense just a little bit. Uh, you bring back some players that uh, did a, a perform well for you. Of course, Luke Bowman has graduated and, and finally moved on, All-American, and, and he's been a big part of that defense. But uh, Darius Hylett comes back, uh, found his way into opponents' backfields often, early and often, as well as Theron Hoare. And uh, you bring back Peyton Doles coming back for the 23 season. Yeah, we our uh, our front seven is still uh, on defense. You know, kind of probably one of the I take our too deep and compare them to anybody in the country. Um, you know, we were blessed to have a lot of good players there that you didn't mention, and and um, you know, it's kind of what uh, you know we built our identity on defensively is is a lot of movement and and um, different looks and challenges. You know, we want to be kind of like a, an option offense when you're, when a team's coming to prepare for us, you know, on defense and that, you know, we're going to keep people up at night worrying about preparing for our defense 
And, um, you know, we have a lot of players that um, are ready to go. And you know, if you look at our stats over the years, it's it's always by committee. If not, you know, we have standout players, but um, the stats are usually pretty even. And, and uh, you know, it's not like the type of thing where you're playing an opponent. You're like, hey, if we can get this guy blocked, we're going to have success. Um, you you got to be able to stop a lot of our guys. So, um, you know, we're excited about uh, moving forward here in the 2023 uh, season with, uh, a few different names as well. Coach Noel Patterson, who was a receiver, also uh, spent a lot of time returning the ball, punt and kickoffs as well. Uh, he's moved on, and so you have some spots to fill there on uh, special teams. Talk about your special teams and what they might look like. Yeah, we always uh, feel like we have an advantage uh, in this, going into special special team play on Saturdays. Um, you know, we take a lot of pride of it here in this program and um you know it's something when when i became the head coach um you know i decided to take that role on uh, fully and and have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator um and so uh, you know when the head coach is talking about special teams and working with guys you know it's, an, it's a way to work with your whole roster as well um, which is something i wanted to do as the head coach so um you know, we, we put a lot of detail into it, a lot of uh, preparation, um, and it's not an afterthought for us. And I think here over the years, it's played a big advantage for us in field position and big plays and, and things of that nature. Well, your schedule gets underway on September 2nd, and you have a very tough Mid-South schedule, as always. It's going to be brutal. But I think your schedule is one of the more challenging ones throughout the country, and it's it's just top to bottom. Your non-conference schedule looks like this. You you head out uh, to Laurenburg, North Carolina, St. Andrews, a program that is improving. Then you have the, the national runners-up at home for your home opener September 9th. Kaiser comes to town, point, uh, strong finish to the season. You get them at home back-to-back weekends. Then you head out to Bluefield, Virginia as well. And that's all in the month of September and before we even talk about Mid-South play. So tell us about your schedule. Yeah, it's um, you know a little unique this year with – uh, a few teams leaving our conference and, um, you know, we were fortunate that we were able to get a scheduling agreement with the Appalachian Conference, um, but it, you know, left us uh, having to find a, a game or an opponent uh, for the first time in a number of years. Uh, you know, I think it's been um, where the, the schedule is always kind of handed to you and there's, there's 10 games and if you wanted to go find an 11th game, you could. Um, and we've had some far travels to Florida and, and various things. so. Um, you know, I feel like we're prepared to, to make some of these long trips uh, that we have. You know, St. Andrews is a, a nine hour trip and, um, you know, will be a challenge, uh, you know, just based on being the first game of the year and a, a lot of question marks there that, that we'll have to put to a test right there on uh, game one. And then um, Kaiser, Kaiser University is a, a tough opponent. We've played three times, um, I think, in the, in the past few years. And so, we know each other well. They're well coached. Their head coach, um, you know, is very successful, and um, so that's going to be a very big challenge. But um, you know, that's something that kind of when we were looking for a game, um, you know, I, I wanted to, to play a quality opponent early um, because you know I felt like a little bit in, in 2022 um, we were very fortunate, um, kind of in, in games three and four and five, um, where we weren't high playing our best football um, because of um, just being a little complacent, that's part of my job. But, um, I, you know, I wanted to get somebody on the opponent on our schedule that was going to get our guys' attention and make sure we're playing at our best here early in the season, um, leading into conference play. Um, and so uh, Point and Bluefield will also be uh, big challenges. Um, you know, I'm familiar with Point's coach from his time here at Cincinnati Christian in, in our conference and have seen them on video um, over the years, and they play extremely hard. Um, and are well coached, and then Bluefield, um, you know, uh, seen them on video as well. And I, I know offensively they chuck it all over the place. Um, they're they're wide open, throwing about damn near every play. So, um, so it'll be a, another long trip there. Um, and I've never been to been to their stadium or anything like that. So, um, and neither has really anyone in our program. So, um, be a fun fun challenge as well. Well, Coach, success to you all this season. The Blue Raiders, again, coming off another great season, 10-2, and, and building on that and, and uh, trying to make a run deep to the playoff. 
was that far removed from a national championship just a couple of years ago, and I know you are a part of that as well. Coach, thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit and visiting about the Blue Raiders. We will follow you this season. All right. I appreciate your time, Joey.